so initially we have started with the version control system right like what is a version control system then we have discussed about types of version control systems then uh, yeah we have discussed about uh, the distributed version control system and the centralized version control system yeah and then we have discussed about uh, the uh, git git the market leader and then we have discussed about the git architecture right and then started with the basics understood what is a working directory staging area and then the local repository and then on local repository we have understood how to move your changes from working directory to staging area from staging to local repository right we have learned git add commands diff adding right committing the code and then we have seen uh, uh, diff commands we have seen removing the files we have seen uh, uh, removing the files in multiple ways correct also we have seen revert reset ignore correct um, again in reset we have seen different types of resets like hard reset soft reset mixed reset yeah and then we have went to the concept of branching merging with conflicts without conflicts true correct so these are all the things we have gone through and then uh, after branching and merging, we have discussed about stash. We have discussed about rebase. Yeah. And um, what else? Anything else I'm missing? Yeah. And then we have discussed about remote repositories, right? When we come to remote, yes, we have started with the cloning, pushing, pulling, right? and then fetching the changes. Yeah, we have discussed all of this on remote repositories. And also like we have discussed about conflicts on remote. Correct, last class we have discussed about conflicts on remote. The conceptually it's same like how you get a conflict in local repository, but yes, this is more uh, practical because like we will be working as a team. So you may get conflicts with others. So how to resolve it? These are all the things we have gone through. Right, we have learned Git almost everything, right? So you need not learn each and every command by heart them and all. You have to make sure you understand this concept. If you work with this, anything else, you I have shown you how to use help and all, right? So this is the, uh, these are the things we have done. Today, let's talk about uh, conflicts on remote uh, and how do you uh, make these conflicts, like how do you resolve them better? Let's look into all of this today. Right, so let's get started. Okay, let me open my remote repository. And this was the repository we were making changes on, right? This is the one. Yeah, report. Okay, we were. This is a local repository, and this is the remote one. So now let's let's take a few scenarios. Let's do one thing. I'm showing you a pull once again. Okay, like a, a conflict uh, once again, like conflict scenarios, no conflicts and all. So I'm just creating some file here. Okay, let's say index.html. I'm writing some HTML line, some dummy line. You may write anything of your choice. Any text file should be fine. Okay, that's a comment message. So I have this file created. Okay, let's go to our local repository. Here also, I'm creating something else. Index 2.html, some simple HTML file. I'm adding some header. If you don't know HTML, no worries. You prepare any file, fine. Okay, done. So yeah, like uh, I have created a file, so let's add the file and 
commit the changes. Git commit minus cm some HTML on local. Okay, done. Perfect. So I have some changes here. Now, okay, fine. I'm done with my changes. I want to push these changes to remote. What should I do to push the changes? How to push the changes from here to remote? How should I do now? Git push remote and branch name. Git, git, git push remote. Okay, let me do that. Git push origin. origin. Right. Yeah, git push origin. Can I push it? Will it work? Or anything else I should do? No, we need to See? give a path. We need to give a URL. Origins Which URL. URL you need to give? Origins URL. Do you provide you know, URL each time? One no, I think since we have already connected, connection is already established between the uh, local and local. No, Priti, we have to do a pull first of all and then we have see, to do a push. Yeah. See, origin is already set. We have done git remote add correct, origin correct, or correct, you have correct. done we'll git have to clone pull, origin. Yeah, we'll have to pull and get this uh, Local if you do git updated. remote minus v, origin is already set. Should we set origin each time? No, it's not required. Not required. So you have to push. So to push what you have to do, always the thumb rule. In the last class we discussed uh, yesterday, to pull thumb first. rule is we need to pull. Always get the latest updates. Always have your repository updated with the changes. Pull before you push. So what okay. should you do? Git pull git origin. Pull origin. Main. Okay, pull the changes before you push. And because it was a different file, index file, so there's no problem it has pushed. Or it, like I told you, pull is like merging the changes from remote to local. So perfect, no conflicts, everything is fine. Um, okay, everything is good. Just go to this uh, repository. I might have showed you one more thing here before pushing, but that's okay. See here, HTML file. Okay, what was this commit message? Where is this commit message coming from? Have I pushed it? Okay, I didn't push that yet, okay, fine. See, this is the commit I made here today, right? On the remote and uh, just go here. So how many commits were there? 12 commits. Okay, fine, I have pushed it. Uh, sorry, I have pulled it. Now let's push. Now will the push work successfully? Will it push successfully now? Uh, yes. So let's see. Because I have all the latest code, push should work successfully. Index 2 should be there on remote, okay? So if you just go here, refresh this. So how many commits should be there? How many commits are you expecting earlier? Before push, there were 12. How many should be there here ideally? 13. 13 should be there, but why there were 14? See, index 2 was pushed. There should be 13, but how come there were 14? See, see here carefully. This is the one I made on remote. Correct. This is the one from local, means it's coming from here, HTML on local. If you see git log one line, see here, right? This is the one I made here. Isn't it? See, this is the one I made here. Then when I pulled this came up, yeah, this came from remote. I'm repeating again. Today I made this commit on my local machine. When I pulled this came in here, this is because of merge, right? There, there was a merge happened. So this is the one. So when I pushed what happened, it has pushed all of this merge commit also. So and you are seeing here two commits means you are seeing an additional commit. Additional commit just because of merge happened there. I'll show you once again. See here, this is the commit happened on local. This is the commit happened on remote. This is because you merged, you pulled. So an additional commit was added as the branch, as a topmost commit, and you're seeing this. But ideally, I don't want an additional commit, just I am merging, right? So how to avoid this? We have even discussed this concept. How to avoid a merge commit as a topmost commit in the branch? Using rebase. Using rebase. Instead of merge, do the rebase, right? Do the rebase so that it will not add this merge as a topmost branch. Yesterday we discussed rebase that's confined for local. That's a bit different. That we don't use regularly, but this one we can use uh, regularly, more frequently than the 
rebase we discussed yesterday. So I will repeat the same scenario once again, okay, with another file. Uh, earlier, what I did, I have created one file here, some other changes on uh, uh, local, then I pushed. Let's repeat the same. I'm creating here a file called index3.html, another HTML file. You may create any file of your choice. Okay, so is this new index3.html available locally? Do I have that? No. No, we don't have it. There were 15 commits here. The topmost commit will not be available here. Okay, it's not there. Fine, I'm just creating something else here. Okay, well, now let's say, Okay, done. Let's add this file. Okay, fine, done. Now I want to push the changes, my changes to remote. How to push the changes? What is the command and what is the best practice? Like what, what is the thumb rule we should follow here? First we have to pull and then we have to push. You have to pull, otherwise it will not allow. So I'm just checking to trying to push. It will say that updates are rejected because you have to do a pull. Fine, I'll do a pull. Get pull or result main, like we did earlier. So if you pull what is happening, two commits will be created locally, correct? See here, git log, one line. Earlier, this is the commit I made locally. Sorry, this is the one I made, uh, sorry. Today, yeah, this one. I made it, uh, one second, one second. No, this is the one I made today locally, right? When I pulled, these two came up, correct? These two came up when I pulled. Two commits were created when I pulled. And when I'm pushing, the same thing is being pushed back. Correct? Agree, everyone? I'm repeating. See, this is the commit I made locally for this index too. Then because I have to push this, when I pulled these two commits were added, and when I pushed the changes back, all these three commits were being pushed. So now what I have, again, the same. I have created some file here. Now I want to pull. But if I pull like this, two more commits will be created, which I don't want. Right, an additional commit is being created for merging. So what I will do here is I will pull with the dbase. So how to do that? In till now, how we are doing it? We are just doing git pull origin. Right, this is what we were doing. Now what I'll do? Git pull origin minus r means pull with the rebase. This is how you can pull. That's a pull with rebase. Right. Git pull origin main and with minus r. Let's see what happens. There is no conflict, right? It's a different file. So there will be no conflicts. Successfully rebased and updated. Check the log, which is important. If you see the log, see here. See, there is no much commit created. Do you notice here? This is the one which I made earlier directly here. And this is the one which, uh, which was added when I make, made a pull. This is eliminated. This kind of commit is eliminated. A merge commit when you are pulling. Making sense, all of you? Yes, or any confusions, you can feel free to respond. If it is clear, please confirm me. Yeah. yeah, see there were 15 commits. Now, because there is no additional merge commit, what happens when I pull? Oh, sorry, when I push, I can push now. So it was pushed. Let's see. Because there is no additional merge commit, there'll be only 16 commits. Yeah, do you see only one commit because you're pushing? Yeah, see here, this is previous one. See earlier, three commits were added, but now just 
one is the one which we made here. This is coming from uh, local. That's all. Understood the concept of pull rebase, everyone? That's a pull with a rebase. So the same thing can happen in the case of conflict also. The same again. Uh, shall I show you that scenario as well? Shall we go through that? This is the scenario without conflict. Pull and push without conflict. Again, pull, you can have a pull and push with conflict. Again, we'll pull with the rebase. Same. Let me repeat it. Let me repeat it. I'm creating a file here. Uh, Prithi, uh, during the end of the session, uh, could you please summarize all the git commands and how uh, like easily can remember if anyone asks uh, concept-wise, uh, Prithi? Okay, sure. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. So let's see if this... Right, so a new file is added, a new commit. So you have 17 commits now. I need a conflict, let me create the same file here. So locally, I'm making the changes. Let's add the change. Commit the changes. Okay, done. So now I want to push the changes. So obviously, git push origin main. Will this work now? Definitely, it will ask us to pull, right? So let's see. When I try to push my changes, they will be rejected and, I, and I'll be asked to pull. So what I should do? Git pull origin main. So if I do this, yes, I, I'll get a conflict and also a new commit ID, a merge commit ID will be added. This scenario, actually, we have done uh, directly pulling it. See, this is the one on local. Right, so now I have to do a pull. First, I'm just doing normal pull. This one we have done earlier also. Okay, just pulling. Okay, I'm just pulling normally so that first let's see the conflict. We, we have seen this already, but still uh, to avoid any other confusions, I'm doing this once again, just pull it. You will get a conflict. See, auto, mer auto merging index by fail, merge conflicts. And you have to resolve it. Here, the difference is you have to talk to the person with whom you got the conflict and uh, resolve them. I'm adding both of them. Add it. Okay, then commit the changes. Git commit. Right. Uh, oh, sorry. See, we have to add and commit. We have made some changes, so we're done. So now if you see the log, yeah, again the same, a merge conflict might be added here, right? So now let's do the push. Let's see, see this is the one, this is the additional conflict added here. Uh, sorry, additional commit added here, right? This is from uh, local and these two from remote two got added now if you do the push obviously there will be two commits pushed in the case of conflict also 
right so let's see earlier there were 17 right there were 19 commits here because there is an additional commit created because of your full like merge happened there merge right see greetings conflicts this is the additional one because of that merge so again i want to avoid this whether it's a conflict case or no conflict case you can do pull with a rebase so let us do that let me create another file Right. So you are having here some 20 commits. Now let's suppose I just want to get those changes and also before that I would like to make here some file. Right, so let's add and commit the changes, git add. And then git commit minus m. Right, so done, changes were ready. Now I want to make a push, git push origin main. But I, when I try to push, it will ask me to pull. I have to pull. But when I pull, a merge will happen. An original merge a commit ID will be created in the log. I want to avoid this. So how to do a pull with rebase? Pull with a rebase. Git pull origin master minus R. Right? So pull with the rebase. Main, not master. Hmm? Yeah, correct. It's a main branch here. See here, we have got a conflict. See, see, it was saying there was a conflict. Resolve all conflicts ma manually. Mark them as resolved. Okay, and then continue. It was asking us to continue. If you want to continue this, git rebase continue. Right? So what you have to do, go to this file. Okay, I want to put both. I'm accepting both of them. Right? Now add this file because I made some changes. Add the changes. Git add. Right. And you can check the status at this point. See here. It's asking us you are currently rebasing. Do git rebase continue. Okay. Just run this command git rebase continue. Okay. Some message like let's say. Um, get into the insert mode put some message let's say uh, resolving the changes okay some message right so it says it has successfully rebased and you can check the log as well now there should not be an unnecessary merge id created merge commit id see there is nothing now now you can you are ready to push your changes so in the case of conflict, it will ask whether you want to continue the rebase after resolving. So now your changes were there. Ideally, there should be only one additional command because we did with the rebase, pulled with rebase, see? Only one commit. Whichever you are, uh, like whatever changes you are pushing to remote. Understood this rebase, everyone, pull with rebase. 
so yeah that's about the different type i mean different ways you can use this rebase see these are uh, simple i can say they become complex when you lack uh, clarity on the concepts and when you lack uh, uh, the uh, concepts behind the things just don't run the commands blindly you understand and do it otherwise it may mess up your projects any questions in this part from anyone so like uh, pretty actually both um, merge and rebate both are ideally doing the same thing the only difference is that uh, merge create one more commit okay mm -hmm. so uh like when do we use rebate and when do we use merge we see whenever you are uh, you want to push your changes like uh, uh, resolve the conflicts or push your changes and all you do with the pull rebase rather mm -hmm. than doing pull like why because we are getting but to the... avoid unnecessary commit ids in the commit history See, you, when you want to merge you don't want an additional commit id right the concept of commit id is uh, generally like ideally whenever you make change you want to have it right just because of merging we don't need to add a separate one a separate commit id there so that is the only reason hmm. you to avoid unnecessary commit ids you go with a pull rebase <laughs> okay and then when do we use simple merge Simple merge is like, see, you are pulling the changes, you are merging it to locally, right? So yes. you just want, you are not bothered about the commit history and you will just want to have your changes locally, you can do merge. But the best practice is when you are merging, you don't run git merge, right? It is only always pull. Git pull, git pull with rebase. Better you do with git pull rebase to avoid unnecessary commit ideas. You can use both. But if you want to keep your log clean, you can use git pull rebase. You can use git pull rebase. Okay, so that is the only reason. Okay, got mm -hmm. it. And Preeti, the linear uh, commit IDs uh, you, you discussed yesterday, right? By using mm -hmm. rebase, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it will just uh, order the commit IDs uh, on a linear basis from a parent. That uh, is the rebase when you apply to your local branches only, okay, within your is, local branches. Oh, that is the main confined. difference between, okay, remote repository mm -hmm. rebase and the local repository mm -hmm. rebase. Okay, okay. Yes. And uh, uh, yeah, let me talk about something about the branching strategy. See, we were creating everything on main, right? And we discussed like we can create a branches. But when do you create a branch or how do you create a branch? That's called branching strategy, which would be a call taken by uh, taken care by the leads managers. Right? Generally, there will be different strategies implemented in general or most of the cases. It would be like there will be developed branch right master branch always which are like long lived branches we can say means they would be like kind of permanent kind of developed branch master branch or else let's say you have some other environment test branch so always your uh, these are like permanent branches right and uh, suppose let's say i have developed branch let's suppose there's a developed branch yeah this is permanent branch which is going to be deployed to dev environment master branch will be deployed on production environment so uh, on develop branch let's say i want to make some changes let's say i'm a developer or else i want to test some changes what will do you will not directly go and make changes on the develop branch right away rather what you will do let's say this is a develop branch you will not make changes directly on this branch rather everyone for that matter will create a feature branch from this they'll create a feature branch from here Okay, they'll make changes here on this feature branch. Once these changes are working, like then they will merge this back to development. But how they'll merge? They, this will be merged to a, a developed branch back. Means first check out a branch from developed branch, make your changes there, test it there, then merge it back. But how do you merge it? You don't run just directly git merge and merge it. How do you merge it? You raise a PR. What is this PR? It's called pull request. On Bitbucket, we call it as a pull request. On GitHub, you call it as a merge request. Whatever you call it, whatever name you give it, it's common for all the repositories. Here, you will have a pull request. See here, 
first see first let's say this is a table branch i want to make changes here what i'll do is see find or create a branch i'll create a branch called b1 from master see create a branch from main it is showing already so create a branch here now okay this is my feature branch i'll make changes here uh, let's suppose i want to edit this file thing of course locally i'll pull it locally that's always the best way we don't do from this ui generally you pull it locally make some changes here whatever okay and commit your changes i mean locally and then push it here in the into the feature branch okay let's suppose okay my feature branch is ready okay how do you merge it to master you will raise a pull request see compare and pull request Okay, you can raise a pull. You have to raise a PR, merge request or pull request, whatever you call. See, from you want to do it from uh, B1 to the main branch. Okay, you put some comments. You put what is the changes about and create a pull request. PR means you don't directly merge it. This PR will go to the manager or other team members. Okay, they will review. It's may it may be a kind of peer review or else a kind of review from your seniors. Our manager, and so this request they will receive this request because I have created on my own. Like it was giving me this option. Okay, only few people will have this permission to merge it. So what they'll do? This branch has no conflict, and they can see the changes, and they will click on this merge the pull request. Then it will be merged to the master branch. See here, require approval from specific reviewers before merging. you can add a rule like which one you want to add see protection rule branch protection who can merge it require a pull request before merging definitely you need a require required number of approvals means you can say how many people should i approve it like generally there will be at least we can put two reviewers okay like a manager and a senior uh, peer review one peer review and manager review so that only after two reviews it will accept right a uh, stale pull request when commits are pulled like there some unused pull request maybe there which can not be used anymore require review from code owners right uh, you can choose how you want them to be see so many options were there right you can put the rule and they can only approve you you will add the reviewers there and they can approve it see let's say i merge it See, merge the pull request. Confirm the merge. It's merging. Then I can see pull request successfully merged and closed. Now, this change should be available on this main. I have made some changes here, right? Actually, I made it on B one, but now it came here after this PR. Got it, all of you? See, I'm repeating once again. See here. there can be a development branch okay it means it goes for dev and development in the sense it's not a developers code it may be terraform code which is first uh, creating infrastructure on dev environment okay so now if i want to make changes i'll create a feature branch b1 okay then pull the code locally i i told you now we don't make code changes on this gui you pull the code locally you make changes on b1 okay once done you push to b1 on remote you push this b1 to remote okay once this b1 is available on remote you raise the pr on remote to merge it into the actual dev branch or actual main branch main branch means deploying to production am i making sense so this is like a called feature branching strategy there will be different types of branching strategies generally this is the one uh, we will be using understood the strategy all of you what is a pr yes priti dev is a remote repository dev is a branch on remote repository branch you can pull repository. it and create a local repository from it so dev can be available on in local repository but you don't directly make changes on dev branch you may not be having permissions also you will always create a feature branch from dev either you create you can create branch locally also create your branch locally see don't get confused you don't need to uh, create it on remote only 
you just uh, copy clone it to local okay you will get a develop branch you create a branch from develop here okay see main branch is there i will create a branch here git checkout minus b b3 main okay i'm switch to b3 now i make changes here i'll push this to remote git push origin once my coding is done i'll push it okay git push origin b3 b3 will be pushed then i'll raise a pr on remote got it all of you you can do either ways then see b3 should be available here i'll raise a pr now on this remote see i'll raise a pr here and once it is merged i'll delete this these branches clear now so that's a best way always by merging through pull request and the uh, main branch will not never mess up this main branch should always have the stable code right so once this is a uh, push to develop once we deploy it once it is working fine then how code goes to main branch from develop we'll again push to main branch by again raising a pr first you have a dev branch to make any changes you will create a feature branch from dev okay you make changes here then raise a pr to merge this b2 to dev branch if dev branch is working fine it's all good tested or everything is done of course not only dev later after dev you may just uh, push it to staging environment or prod pre prod i mean sorry pre prod and all then this dev or pre prod branch will be merged to main branch by another pr that's how your code moves from one environment to the other environment so this is one thing do some hands on on this raising a pr you can try it out <coughs> that is all about git and github um there is one more small option i would like to show you see on your repository you can see something like fork can you see that but it was showing cannot fork because you own this repository it's my own repository i can't fork it the meaning of fork is like again like a cloning only there might be some open source projects available on github you can search it on github let's say some open source projects like let's say some docker project is there See, search all GitHub or search only this repository. You have different options. I'm searching entire repository. See, there is some Docker official Jenkins repo. Some repositories, let's say some developers may need it. Okay, there might be some open source projects which you can take as the base and develop above it if you need. Okay, there might be some uh, API available. You may want to upgrade it, enhances some open source projects may be available, right? You want to take that as a base and develop over it. In such cases, see, go here and you can fork it. Fork your own copy. Then what happens? It will be forked into your account. Meaning, see, I'm just doing it. A Docker sample or some name I'm giving. Okay. Create the fork. So I will, it will be added into my account as my own repository. Like if I just go here and check my repositories, see, but it will show you forked from this is the actual owner, actual repository. It's forked from that. So this is the one. So now if you want, you can make uh, changes over this uh, and develop your own project. Only till now it's a copy. From now on, whatever changes you make will not be visible on the original one. It's like you clone to your local, right? It's like copying onto remote. Then again, you can uh, clone it onto your local, make changes here and all. But like it, it is added into your account. So that's another option you have, a uh, copying into your account. And then later you can clone it to your local, make again, it works like your own repository. And it will not mess up whatever changes you make to try and test it will not impact the original one and later if you want to delete any repos generally you will not have permissions to all of this in real time only the admin will have some of the like manager will be the admin for all your repositories 
but in your case in your like when you're practicing if you want you can go to settings and delete any repositories this way it's giving warning do you really want to delete okay delete this any repositories you can delete so that is all about git and github if you know git you can work on any other version control systems similarly if you know this github you can work on bitbucket gitlab everything are same the ui may be different but almost same uh, Prithi, is it possible for you to provide any kind of so like user story which can uh, cover all the uh, We'll provide like you. Like I told check. you, right, yeah. Git, we don't need much of them. Rather, you have to learn the concepts because, like, it's about uh, managing your files. But, yeah, we'll try to provide on that also. Yeah, that will help us to hmm. uh, utilize all the commands, actually, as a learning check hmm. for the entire topic. Okay, all right. Sure. Thanks. And, Prithi, uh, I request, could you please summarize all the uh, commands? Uh, like with a simple explanation uh, like to answer anyone uh, if anyone asked an interview like we have covered uh, git from uh, i think how many days we have taken for git uh, uh, including today five days uh, Priti, from five, Monday almost five, five days, days. Yeah. So Entirely. summarizing all the five days commands may not be possible but i have summarized the topics in the beginning of the class today but if you want me to like any particular topic or anything, let me know. Because these five days we have done so many commands, right? Adding, committing, then merging, lot many things, lot many commands we have done. Have you all got access to Google Drive? Yes, everyone. Yeah, there yeah. there were a complete list of the documents quickly to refer for doing hands on. Okay, we are also coming up with uh, some updated notes as well. Okay, that may take time, but yeah, we are also uh, coming up with the, uh, uh, I mean, updating the existing one as well. Uh, there, topic wise, you have. Can you see in the drive topic wise? Uh, just go to your drive. A git folder yeah git hands-on commands yeah can you see on topic wise like installation on linux then working directory staging area local repository commands related to those to those three concepts how to unstage deleting the files Ignore revert. Can you see them topic wise? Kiran, can you see all of them? Everyone having access? Branching, merging, all of them related to branching. Stash. And then you have about the rebase. Oh, I didn't get it. Repositories. Actually, checking. Uh, yeah, yeah. There you have all the commands. I think it was almost 13 pages of the commands. To put all of them once uh, may be difficult, but yeah, you have everything here topic wise. If you want any particular topic to summarize or anything you have, let me know. Any particular part you have confusion there. So this completes Git and GitHub. You can pose any questions now on these topics or any hands on where you are stuck up. Uh, we'll take up a quiz today and we have the next topic before we go to Jenkins. See, we didn't use it the Git in pipeline, yet, right? We have learned it from the perspective of version controlling our files, our code. But you need to put this into pipeline also, right? So to put this uh, Git, I mean, we need to have a code. We need to pull the code from Git and all. So to do this in the pipeline, we need to get to the next tool called Jenkins, right? That's how you make a pipeline. So you pull the code from Git from Jenkins. So Git is completed in the sense, yes, we have learned Git. We have to still implement this in the CI CD pipeline. Okay, to do that, we need to get into the next tool in the course, which is Jenkins. But again, before going to Jenkins, we need to take up Linux. 
right we will learn linux whatever required for our devops like to an intermediate level of linux knowledge will be enough for devops you don't need to go into linux administration and all because linux admins will be again there will be a separate team of linux admins so to whatever extent of linux we should know we'll be learning that here okay so we'll be getting started with linux from monday and after linux we'll get into jenkins the reason why we were picking up linux here how do you practice linux okay we, like you may not be having linux systems so how to do all of that and all is the next discussion any uh, like uh, may I know like how many of you have some linux basic knowledge how many of you are into linux how many of you are new okay you all have linux knowledge right whoever raised the hand actually it's been long priti i've had done red hat uh, certification in 2006 17 years back Mm -hmm. so i am like off touch right now but definitely class can help me to recollect the concepts yeah yeah, yeah. okay fine so three people uh, i think four people already know that that's all danvel and no linux shilpi knows linux durai knows linux and that's all hmm. okay little experience with basic commands ha huh? fine see if you are completely new also no problem because i'll take you from the very basics so if you're already into linux uh, you can brush up your linux skills okay and uh, get started so we'll have a linux session from monday so like we don't have a class on weekend right no we don't have class on weekend classes will be from monday to friday these okay. two days you can completely uh, do your hands on priti just a thought uh, like mm -hmm. uh, why don't we create a, a repository for our group uh, in uh, uh, github and then uh, like how you said as a team uh, shall yeah. we give a quick try i mean just just a, a guy one maybe i can try to push one a file one the same maybe within our team can just uh, try to have a merge uh, then yeah like i'm going request. to share a code repository with you once we start the hands on because like uh, we will deploy and do all of this ca cd on some applications okay on that code base you can do it but still if you want to create a dummy one yes you can create a dummy one and collaborate yeah fine that is also fine uh, yeah. let me check okay i will share some repository with your dummy one yeah uh, okay because uh, because to weekend. have a better hands on with the uh, version control i mean yeah. git git github itself uh, yeah. uh, shall we just give a try like that kind sure. so that we'll get, we'll just have a hands on from our side yeah. and at the same time we may just have try to uh, practice something yeah. on a remote repository and those things also yeah, sure i'll i'll share a remote repository link okay everyone can uh, uh, share it and try to do a pull and all okay yeah. yeah we'll share uh, one there yeah okay, okay. in the whatsapp and, group we'll post it hmm. sure priti and priti like when i just observe the git commands like some of them are having a double if and some of them are have within the flag values i'm talking about particularly for an example git log if and if and one line at the same mm -hmm. time uh, when we just use uh, git commit if and a a single single if and is there a difference we can just um, have it in our mind okay uh, the flag value of this one should come um, followed by two if and this will come followed by single if and or uh, how will it make a difference in these in these two uh, actually like uh, for the main command we'll have a, a one hyphen and for the sub command sub uh, commands we'll have a uh, two and oh. also uh, yeah the main for all the linux commands it would be the same way mm -hmm. okay and, and also them... generally generally see if you notice if it is a one letter like minus a minus m you will have one like one hyphen there right okay. if your flag you are passing is multiple letters it will be two hyphens that's another difference you can notice see git log one line one line is multiple letters you will have yeah. two flags there understood minus a only one 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 character so one oh, okay. icon will be there oh like that we can just make some difference uh, oh okay uh, okay 
Even right. now, for any other Linux commands, that's how it will see if you put here. Uh, are you seeing my screen? No. Yeah, but desktop only. Yeah. Huh. Now, now uh, like if you see here, right? Uh, git add like minus a will be there, right? Or else let's say you take a git remote minus v. But you can also do it like git remote verbose. Same thing, but it is verbose, multiple characters, you'll have double hyphen. Single character you are using, it will be single hyphen. That will oh. be an analogy you can take it up in Linux. That would be how it would be mostly if you notice all the git commands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, likewise uh, for-, for the, uh, Generally so for the sub commands or the flags, you will have this hyphen. The main command will not have anything, right? See, the git remote is the main command. You will not have anything here. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Okay, pretty fine. And uh, one more thing. Hmm. Pretty, when you just have the a file merge, if suppose the file, in between the files are having some conflict, then in this tool it is showing on top mm. either you want to merge both or uh, omit this mm. one or the, the options it will show right mm. how will we just uh, have the same difference or can able to compare and see the difference through cli cli also it will show you cli you can do it will show you there is a conflict in the cli you open the file like this. only the difference is editor it will show oh. you index six has got a conflict. And you open using cat command, it will show you the same verbose. But oh, the okay. problem is in CLI, you have to open your VI editor, Vim editor, like from command. Oh, and manually, we have, to, we have to just huh. check and. Uh, you have it. to do manually, which will be difficult. Whereas okay. this kind of editors will help you. There were so many other editors beyond compare or uh, different merge tools are there which provides you a GII to compare them side by side. Otherwise, from CLI resolving them, if they're huge files, would be a challenge, right? Okay. Okay, okay, got it. So, Preeti, apart from Git, um, I think uh, I can see the Terraform and Kubernetes uh, icons here as well. So, even those are being used in this uh, Visual Studio Editor. Yes, in the beginning, I told you, right, VS Code Editor is very widely used. Even it can be used for development like Python, any development. Even it supports Terraform code, Kubernetes code. This one you see only when you install extensions. We will discuss okay. them, okay? You can go here and install the supported extensions. You want to manage Kubernetes files or Ansible files. See, I have already installed some of them. You can install the extension so that it helps you in auto-completion, syntax highlighting and all. Okay. Here you can see what are all the languages it supports. Uh, so many things you can do here. Okay. All right, we'll discuss them. Like we'll uh, talk about those extensions once we start getting into those. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, do hands-on on this editor from the beginning. Companies also test in the interview whether you have hands on it because uh, some uh, Terraform Kubernetes interviews, they may, they may give you some uh, kind of a small project, kind of some assignment, kind of ask you to share your screen and show how you are comfortable using these editors. So also make point that you are comfortable with this editor. Yeah. All right, uh, can I share the quiz now? Are you all ready? Yeah, sure.
Yeah, I have sent the form in the uh, Zoom chat. Please go through it and submit. Meanwhile, any questions you have, anything else you can ask me. Um, Priti, let us give a try on this, uh, uh, like uh, hands-on on this Git and GitHub concepts, whatever we discussed as of now in a class. And Monday, maybe if we have any doubts, let's have the doubt clarifications and then we'll just begin the Linux session, Priti. Just a request. Sorry, I didn't get you. You mean a separate session for doubts? No, 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 no. What I uh, what I'm saying, like uh, uh, during this weekend, let us give a hands-on or a practice about the concepts whatever we discussed in a class. I mean mm -hmm. about Git and GitHub. And mm -hmm. if at all any doubts for any of us, let's have the quick uh, clarification, doubt clarifications, and then we'll begin with the Linux session, Priti. Sure, Monday. sure. If you still have a questions after hands-on, definitely you'll have more questions after hands-on. You're always open for. Uh, I'm always open for your questions. Okay, you can uh, post your questions on Monday also before sure. we begin. Sure, Priti, because yesterday I opened the, uh, this one, mm -hmm. downloaded this VS code as well as the mm -hmm. GitHub account I opened, but uh, those things, uh, the passcode generation and those things I have to try uh, as of now. So we'll just give a try on those. Maybe all of us, uh, like, we'll, we'll just, if any of us having any queries, we'll uh, just check with you on Monday. Always you can do, okay, do sure. the hands-on and then come up with questions even after starting Linux also. You can ask me the questions on Git, not a problem. Okay, always. You're Thanks. always welcome. Thanks. And, but I would like to just request one thing from everyone. Don't pile up the things. Okay, Git, you, you might not be ready by now. Planning is not at done and all. Don't just pile up the things for the two, for the weekend, for just Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday, you revise the whole thing once again. But do the hands-on on daily basis. That's the best way. Saturday, Sunday, you should take up additional things on Git. Like your revision should happen on the things you learned over the weekend. Don't get started over the weekend. That's a suggestion. Uh, to whatever possible extent, uh, just try to do implement it. All right, then. Please uh, submit your, uh, go through that and submit your question.